What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 49 and just before we dive into today's episode I want to say very briefly we are one episode away from a half a century of episodes in this series. It's crazy how we've got this far in so quickly and I want to say first and foremost thank you so much for all the support on the series so far. You know we're halfway through season four it's been an amazing journey thus far with Brentford and there's still a long way to go and a lot more work to do and since the very first episode your support has been been absolutely incredible so from me to you I want to say thank you for all the support and if you are new viewers to the channel this is the first series of mine you watched and basically when we hit a milestone of either 50 or 100 episodes in a series I make a special thank you episode to say that I really appreciate all your support all your love since the very beginning and for still being here so yeah tomorrow we will have a special thank you episode number 50 I'm excited to bring it to you and yeah I just want to say again very briefly as I'll say tomorrow as well thank you for your support without you guys my channel does not exist your love your appreciation appreciation is everything to me. So, as we head into today's episode on the back of a very soppy introduction there, uh, we start off here with a scouting update and academy update because January has arrived. Yes, the January transfer window is now open. We've got around 7 million in the budget. As you saw, our four players leave out on loan there. And I really don't know what we're going to do in this window. The question is, do we do anything? Well, right now we are on an 11 game unbeaten run in all competitions with Brentford. It's the best and longest unbeaten run we've been on since the series began. During this run, we've clinched top spot in the Europa League. We've picked up two scalps away at the Emirates and home to Manchester City. We've progressed the Carabao Cup semi-finals. Let's look at our fixture for January here as well. So our FA Cup third round tie is gonna be away at the Rico against Coventry City. Do we need to do anything? I mean, right now we're in second place. We're 10 points off Liverpool. Okay, we're not going to be in a title race, let's be honest here. But a chance to get to the Carabao Cup final, our first cup final of this series, in a Champions League spot, into the first knockout round proper of the Europa League, if you will, once you get past the preliminary round. And again, on an 11 game unbeaten run. I'd love to make signings in January, but right now, this is the best run of form in the series for Brentford. Are we going to change things right now in this run of form? I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Still, for the first game of today's episode, Bielsa's boys leads coming to takes on here at the Community Stadium. Heading into this game, aiming to keep the unbeaten run going and try and keep pace with Liverpool as long as we can. Started the game off on attack mode. Adam Ola looked man firing wide and Gutierrez hitting the post soon after as it was still 0-0 heading into the break. But three minutes after the restart, a chance to go in front. Stanley Young sent on left-hand side in behind Carvajal. Whips one into the middle and Jesse Lingard's acrobatic effort goes into the side netting. From the very first whistle we've been on top though, Leeds hadn't really caused us any problems at all. So I felt it could be more free-flowing in attack and forward thinking. And just past the hour mark, Gutierrez, our top scorer, turns provider. And off the bench, Ollie Watkins on for Adam Ola Lookman. Gets what is just his second goal in the Premier League since coming to Brentford this season. Most of his goals are coming over the Cup or the Europa League. But hey, we will take it. Great through ball. And Watkins have that burst of pace and acceleration that makes him so good when running through one-on-one. Clinical finish, Brentford in front, taking the lead. However, it will not last long. Eight minutes after we took the advantage. DCL, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the former Toffee, smacks one in and leads out of nowhere. Had been from not in the game at all to back tied at 1-1. But with 10 minutes to go, desperate to get ourselves back in front. Couldn't afford to slip up here if we'd stay in the top four. Well, I've mentioned it. I love this guy to pieces. Stanley Young does it again. Brentford 2, Leeds United 1. It's Young with another. And it's so frustrating that this guy just isn't growing at the rate you'd expect him to. He's only 20 years old. Ashley's nephew has what you would imagine to be a very bright future after winning the assist title last year and showing just how good of a future this guy could have. He's man of the match in this game. He scores the late winner, but he's only grown a rating this year. He's only got up by one. And okay, I'll admit it, he's not been quite as good as last season, but four goals and four assists in 17 games for a left wing back is pretty decent. It's pretty decent. I just, I really can't understand why he's just not growing. 78 overall, only up by one rating this year. I keep on changing the development plans to find out which one is going to give him the quickest growth. But he just doesn't seem to be developing at all. And it's so frustrating. I think there's just certain players who you have... And I'd never say that their potential is locked, if you will. But the range is very hard to surpass, if you know what I mean. I think that's the case with Stanley Young. He's never had a potential tag. Even though last season he won the assist title. 
and I just can't seem to grow him quicker. I'm a little bit worried that he might get to like 80, 81 overall, and that's as good as he'll get. When in reality, with dynamic potential, what you'd imagine should be happening with Stanley right now after an amazing first year in top flight football last season, winning the assist title and a great start this year, it showed great potential. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Anyway, second game of today's episode, after rejected it from Lamptey from Juve, and I stalled on an offer for Zangare from Barcelona. Not sure about that one there. Heading into this game away, Molyneux taking on Bruno Lage's wall, so we fell behind early. What an absolute screamer from Pedro Neto to make it 1-0. When you talk about bend, that curve was more than Kim Kardashian. I mean, that was absolutely ludicrous there. Amazing, amazing goal from Pedro Neto. Wolves took the lead, went in front, and this was just one of those games where, unfortunately, I just wasn't playing good football and I was coming up against a side that were playing really good football. Nine minutes to go in a game where I've barely done anything. We've gone on a 12 game unbeaten run but it's ended away by Bruno Lage's side and justifiably so as well. Happy to admit it always happy to accept when being beaten by the better team. This was one of those games. They did not play well at all. Wolves the far superior side and we end up losing. I wouldn't say over whimper but simply were beaten by the better team. Pedro Neto and Man of the Match display that first goal. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous. The curve on that bend, the curve on that bend, the curve on that ball was incredible, man. But Wolves with the win, and that is not what we needed as well. We've been on a 12-game unbeaten run. We lose it away at Wolves. There were no positives at all. And our very next game, Liverpool away at Anfield, EFL Cup, semi-final first leg. I mean, if there was ever a game to lose our unbeaten run, I did not want it to be that Wolves one. I felt it was probably going to come here, away at Anfield against Liverpool. First time we've reached the Carabao Cup semi-finals, this being the first leg against a side right now, the best in England. Yeah, I love this intro, by the way. I had to show you this. How cool did that look there? Absolutely brilliant. But even so, losing to Wolves, we were already massive underdogs heading into the game, and now we're tired legs out there. A uh, pretty, let's just say, depleted morale with Brentford on the back of the 2-0 loss. And now taking on Liverpool in one of the biggest games of the series. Yeah, let's just say my motivation and my confidence was not a rock bottom, but it was pretty low indeed. But even so, Liverpool away, Anfield first leg, EFL Cup semi-final. Never been here before, and you would have seen by my lineup. Yes, there were some changes, but it was still a really, really strong team out there. I was going to give it my best shot against Jurgen Klopp's side and see how I would get on. Well, nine minutes in, they almost took the lead. An amazing save by David Rea kept us still tied and kept us still goalless. But from that, in a game where I said I was going to be brave, we went on a break. Roberto Gutierrez beats his man, continues to dribble, pops it out wide to Stanley Young, down the left-hand side, men in the middle, including Mbwemo, denied by Allison, who turns behind for a corner. Both goalkeepers making great saves early on. I was thinking, do you know what? Let's be brave here. Let's be brave, not go for the draw and look to take them back home. No. Let's go for the win at Anfield. 29 minutes in, and Buemo stepping inside and bending one in to the far corner to give us the lead. It had the first chance, Allison making the save, but this time gets it right. Bends it in to the far corner. And I really feel as though since the game has gone on and the patches have been introduced, at the very start of FIFA, smacking it in near post to me was preferable, but now I'm preferring finesse shots towards the far corner. They seem to be more effective in smacking one in near post. So 1-0. Brentford in front at Anfield, but Liverpool in the first half played just as good as us. Another great save by Rea, kept us still leading by one. And from the corner, after he claims it, we play out from the back, which is a very difficult thing to do at Anfield and very risky indeed, but we do. Zankari rolls it through to the silver, who pops that wide once again to Stanley Young. He plays a 1-2 with Adam Ola Lookman. He's got Van Dijk to beat. He beats it with the ball roll. He rolls it through. It's Lookman. It's two. It's two for Brentford. We were brave. We were the brave bees at Anfield and we were being rewarded for it. Passing out from the back. Very, very dangerous thing to do at Anfield against our high press. But it pays off. We keep hold the ball. We get ourselves forward. Young into Lookman and the finish to the far corner again puts us two nil up and again I'll say it smacking it in near post to me in this year's FIFA was the way to go initially but since the patches going towards the far corner much 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 more effective I'm finding I'm scoring a lot more goals that way as opposed to at the beginning of FIFA when bending to one of the ones towards the far corner was either an easy save or you'd miss the target I feel like since the patch the finishing now and the chance conversion and the goals you scored they're a lot more balanced which is a much more realistic way of the game to be played there shouldn't be one finishing method that's far more OP to work 
others. So yeah, I'd much prefer that from EA and fair play for them changing that in the patches. And that's why right before half time, after Liverpool got back in the game, Adam Ola Lookman steps in from the left and restores our two goal cushion. How does he do it? I'll say it again, bending it to the far corner. If it's a method that's successful, keep doing it. Why change your winning formula? Lookman bags his brace. Brentford restored a two goal cushion. It's 3 1, but this was just an absolutely bizarre game away in the Northwest. Four minutes after the restart, we were leading by two at the break. I was feeling very confident indeed of pulling off the big scalp. But one thing I couldn't do was stop Liverpool. Cross to the middle, turned in by Bobby Firmino and the Brasilian makes it 3-2. And Liverpool just kept coming. There's a reason why they're leading the league by many points. There's a reason why they're the best team in England right now. Their attack is unstoppable, as we all know. Liverpool 2 Brentford free. But I thought, you know what? If I can't defend, let's just keep attacking. And from kickoff, oh, wouldn't you just know it? We've done it again. We've done it again. From kickoff, didn't surrender possession. I love kickoff goals, you know that. Young into the middle, and it's Brian's brace as Brentford restored a two goal cushion for the third time in the game and go 4 2. Oh, but I just couldn't stop Liverpool. I couldn't stop them. Four and a half minutes to go. They're back in the game again. It's 4 3, and I literally just could not defend it. The rain pouring down. I know my players were slipping and sliding, I don't know. But I I thought, okay, do you know what? I can't defend. I can't defend. I just got to keep scoring. Stoppage time. Gutierrez in behind Nico Phillips. One on one with the goalkeeper and smacks it in. In an absolutely bizarre game. And Anfield. Roberto Gutierrez. Oh, how class are these next gen celebrations? Absolutely brilliant. In front of your way in there. In the half, in the half part of the Anfield stand. 5-3 in an 8-goal thriller at Anfield. Absolutely brilliant game. It is the game of the series. It is the win of the series. We hadn't won at Anfield since the series began. But what a time to put it out. And how do you respond? How do you return from an all-time low? Losing our unbeaten run to Wolves, 2 it away, and losing it with a whimper at Molyneux. Well, how about scoring five at Anfield and winning the first leg of the FL Cup semi-final 5-3 for your first scalp against Klopside? Yeah, it's pretty decent, isn't it? Yeah, I'll certainly take that. What a win. Biggest win of the series. Game of the series. Absolute thriller. Eight goals scored. But despite that being the case, we're in the driving seat heading back home to the community stage but you best believe the tie is far from over. We're taking on the best side in the division, top by nine points. Yeah, believe me, we've got a great chance progressing through to our first ever cup final. But the tie is not over yet. But that wins this episode of Karimo, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have enjoyed today's thrilling episode, then please do drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the special thank you episode number 50. Please make time for it, guys. It's going to be great. Can't wait to bring it out for you guys. Much love, and I'll see you for it very soon. What a game!